Welcome to the Women Leaders Association Daily Member Podcast, where we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland. And in each Daily Member Podcast, we will pick out a great speaker from one of our meetings that we thought you would enjoy. You can access hundreds of recent speakers, book summaries, great articles, and more at no additional charge through your membership portal. If you would like to get involved in a Women Leaders Association Mastermind Group or find a networking group near you, or if you just need access to the membership portal, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com to be connected. Now let's tune in for this incredible message. So I've got plus 20 years of experience in different areas, mostly in the pharma business, as you can mostly guess now from my accent. I'm not from the US, I'm from Brazil. I've been living here for the last four years, but I've also had experience living in Europe and in other regions as well. I'm by uh, experience and background, a business administrator, but I've also done some trainings and some postgrads in other areas. And currently I work for Janssen, J&J, as previous colleagues here. And I, I learned and met new people through this association already, which is great. So if we can move into the next one, diving into what the theme we're going to talk about, and maybe we can go directly into the agenda of how I want to talk to you guys about cracking under pressure. So I gave you an intro of my bio itself. I want to give you a little bit more of why I think this is an interesting topic and why I love to talk about it talk to you about what's and why's of cracking under pressure and some of the strategies that I've built for myself that work and maybe you can use them and see them in your day-to-day -day lives as well. So if we move to the next one, you're gonna see that I've put myself into pressure situations a lot of times. So I've lived in different countries, I've worked in different businesses of the pharma business, always wanting to learn something new, to put myself into a situation where I don't completely know or master what's there. I also like to train myself in this resilience and this energy, like building a muscle, putting yourself to stress so that you stress and rest stress and rest that comes into work, but also into my personal life. You see a picture there of me and my daughter early on as a very small kid. She already came to races with me. And this is an important part of who I am. And I've always dreamt big. And this was before Barbie became a movie. So it was already a way for me to be thinking of how we want to conquer the world. And what I thought was interesting when I was building kind of a way of introducing myself, I asked people how they saw me. And what you see there in the header is like a leader that faces complexity with courage, agility, grace, and sense of fun. So that all translates into who I am. And what I thought was interesting was this grace word. They asked people, why do you feel that? And it's majorly because during stress situations, they don't completely see how stressful I am, although I am. It's just that kind of um, muscle and resilience that we build into and try to bring to day-to-day -day life. So that's why I'm really passionate about this. And I wanted to explore a little bit more of that with you. So if we can move to the next one. Before um, digging into the topic, I thought the most important thing is understanding what are stressful situations to people? What does it mean? And then in a lay question and going through a New York Post poll, these five items we see here on the screen are the ones that came to the top. So moving, going through a breakup or a divorce, getting married, having children, or starting your first job ever. And I would love for us to be able to pull ourselves right now, but I'm pretty sure you can think through your head. How many of us have gone through or scored in any of this? I know myself, I've scored into all of those and for some more than once. But I wanted to bring this to more of a work-related situation. So if we go to the next one, I've pulled a few of my colleagues to understand from them what stress means. So this is work-related. And what came to them is lack of clarity, 
last minute requests, bloated expectations, unrealistic timelines, and people not pulling their weight in. So something for us to pause here and just think about what's really unique about these two together, both the day-to-day -day life that we saw from the New York Times and in work-related situations, is when we lose control. Do we have any control when we don't have clarity of the task that's at our hands or when that last minute request comes in or somebody else's expectations? If there's something that we do not control at all is what somebody else thinks or those unrealistic timelines. So it's really understanding that, well, this is part of life. It's going to happen and we cannot control it. And then if we move to the next one, I wanted us to really understand what cracking under pressure means. And this is really submitting yourself to the stress of that situation. You stop functioning due to pressure. Last year, when I was talking about this, the image we had there was Will Smith. This happened very close to the Oscar time frame, And I thought there was a real vivid representation of somebody that can't really deal with what they're feeling. And this year, what you see here is not only something new that happened to my life, but something that's super stressful, having a baby. So I, I was surprised last year to find out that I'm pregnant with a 10 year daughter already at home. And it was a super stressful situation, being completely honest, because I was not at all prepared to being a mother again in a more mature point of my life when I'm living abroad, in a new work, in a new opportunity. So just understanding that full pressure on top of everything we know that happens with motherhood, right? Thinking about those sleepless nights. So if you see these dark eyes here, that's exactly what you should be thinking of. Yes, babies do take a lot of us. So thinking of how do we want to deal with it? And that's what I wanted to explore in a little bit more detail with you. So if, if we can skip another slide here. There are some strategies, and we can go to the next one, that I think are the most important ones. So understanding where we are, self-awareness. So if you wanna to move to the next one, this point, I wanted to make sure that we were very clear about. We don't control what's gonna happen out there, absolutely not. But if we understand what's happening and what are the triggers that we have, we maybe have a better way of addressing it. Trying to uncover what I was feeling was something that I've always done, but super empirically. And then I came across this book that I would love to share with you from Mark Brackett that provides us with this acronym, the ruler strategy, that's super easily digestible and executable, helping us really going deep into what is the problem. So when he teaches young kids from elementary schools how to deal with what they're feeling, in, and I don't know if some of you have at home little ones that come already with this um, dictionary, so they come with this chip, the small ones, they understand. First of all, they recognize that they're feeling something, and then they understand what is it that they're feeling, and they label it appropriately. And the labeling part is one of the most critical ones. Why is that? Because sometimes we can act upon something and it's not the right thing. So we think we're feeling some way and it's actually another thing that's triggering us and expressing how we're feeling. How many times do we just deny ourselves what's going on or avoid going into what's going on with our lives? And then regulating, that's going to help us understand what the trigger got into us, how we're feeling and how we're impacting others because of it. And maybe I'll share it with you one example from my early days when I started working. So that was when I really understood the importance of knowing what you're feeling. I didn't know this book by then. So this is why I love the cheat sheet because it came like empirically to what I was doing already, helping me find a better method. So when I started my career, 
early, early on, I was passed on from a promotion and all my peers got that promotion. I was the only one who didn't go through it. And I felt so raged and it took me a long time to get out of that situation. I derailed. I almost had my Will Smith moment there on being office appropriate, very combative. So what understood what I understood a little bit later was, well, I was not angered, and that was not that's why I couldn't get out of the situation. It took me long to understand that what was tripping me is that I felt humiliated because everybody else got a promotion except me. So when I understood that and I understood why that was happening to me and why I couldn't address the issue, I quickly solved it and it made me move on much faster. So that for me was the most important thing, understanding what was happening, how should I address it and then move on because that's the most important thing. We're going to be facing stress every single day. We're going to be disappointed every single day. There's no way out of it. The important thing is how do you get out of it? How quickly can you understand where you are and then move ahead to make sure that you're evolving and potentially learning new things using what you already know from previous um, fallouts and then learning new ones because we're going to have more to come for sure. So self-awareness, understanding where you are. And then next one, if we move forward one, the most important part of it, it's not only knowing where you are, but how can you prepare? So if you want to click to the next slide, you're going to see a few tips that I have for preparing myself for a stressful situation. And I separate this in three pillars. The first one is the task. What's the stressful situation per se? So let's say we are going through a talk like this. Is it right for you? You should be asking yourself, are you a person who likes to speak in public? Do you want to do this? Or, oh goodness, I would rather die than do something like that. And I'll give you an example for me. I love giving speeches and I love to be on stage. Even if it's not my first language, I'm okay with that. But if you ask me to go and dance, I'm going to die. And I had that being asked in one of a con in a convention that I was organizing, our opening, our main stage would be kind of a show. And we were supposed, a few people were supposed to dance on stage. I'm like, I cannot do this. I feel comfortable coming into stage, speaking in another language and doing things that maybe other people don't feel comfortable, but you should know yourself what are the things that are right for you. And also thinking about what good looks like if I use the example again of the language here, I know my English is not perfect. If I expect to speak at a perfect level here, I'm just not going to move on. So thinking through, I'm okay missing a few words and knowing people are going to probably not understand completely what I'm saying, but they're going to get the most of it. That's what good looks like. That's going to help me come here. Scenario plan with everything that can happen and be ready for the worst case situation. You are, of course, working for success, but if you're ready for something coming on or some left, left field ball coming in, you're going to be in a much better out, output. Do your due diligence and always focus on the outcomes. People are not going to remember the details. What's the real, real outcome? If you treat just get up and continue. So that's the first part of it. If you think about something, what's the task? Why am I stressed about it? And what can I do? The second one, if you click another one, it's going to bring us to the audience or the environment. So the audience or the environment, they could either work with you or against you. And I think we, in our heads, we think it's going to be against us, but we shouldn't. And I think this is something that women do more than men. On the imposter syndrome, we really think we're not up to it. We really think that we're going to be in a more 
difficult situation, then men just throw themselves at things. My trick into that, and Ginger, if you want to click the next one. So my trick into the audience is to always assume good first. I'm here and because I trust you and thank you for the comment on my part, your uh, Portuguese being not so good as my English. I think we all learn every day. I assume that I'm going to be talking to generals people like you that are going to be willing to listen to me, to meet me in the middle. I also think it's important to identify with the audience's objective. So let's say if, for example, you disagree with your boss on something, but you still want to convince your boss out of your objective. It's easy to find common ground if you understand what both of you want as an outcome. You don't need to see eye to eye with everything, but you can find the outcome when you build that objective that it's common for both. And building connections, for sure. Understanding what they want and how you can provide something. So really taking out the walls out of the environment, out of the audience, and thinking that they're there together with you. The next one, and if you click once more, Ginger, you're going to see that us, we are also responsible personally into facing a stressful situation. So in our minds, we usually play a bad track. We think about what's not going to work. But if we had more supporters in ourselves and also outside, how many mentors do we have that are going to be supporting what we do well? Everybody's going to trip one day or the other or going to go through a stressful situation one day or the other. If you remember and if you are reminded by others of the greatness you bring to the table of everything that you really excel at, you're going to be more, you're going to be stronger for that conversation, which is really interesting. I've heard this morning the um, chief legal officer of an educational group saying that, and it was interesting because she was talking about her maternity leave as well, and how she also felt that she was going through a difficult situation because she had just been promoted and how would she be leaving soon? And then she's like, she's talking to someone that is really reinforcing and reminding her of how great she is. And she made a comment of how many men have come after knowing that the family is expanding, coming back and saying, how much more am I getting? Because now my family ex is expanding and I need more money to support my family versus how many women, when they find themselves pregnant, they're like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna supply for the time that I'm out? It's absolutely not fair to us. And we shouldn't be putting ourselves in that situation. Can we be generous to ourselves as we are to others? So I think that's really critical for us, building that track that's going to put us in the winning track, not on the losing track. And building our muscles. So every time we go through stress, it's kind of physiological. Our hearts are going to pump. We're going to sweat a little bit more, but our muscles are going to be stronger. It's the same on facing it. So first time something happens to you, you're probably going to be a little bit more, uh, it's going to be more challenging for you to understand how to deal with it, both emotionally, but also practically. Second time around, you probably already know how to deal with it. So that's what this rest and stress really helps us with. And use the learnings. If something happened, how can you do different from leveraging the learnings you've had before? So this is how I think we should be prepared to face stressful situations. Knowing who we are, having that self-awareness of what's triggering me to get here, and then getting prepared in a stressful situation by tackling task, the audience or the environment, and also ourselves, preparing ourselves to be there. And if we move to the next one, this is how I share my personal strategy with you. When I have a problem, big or small, I always tend to exaggerate. And I think I'm not alone here. 
if something's happening, if I'm losing the time to get my daughter on the bus, I think, oh my goodness, she's going to be alone and she's going to be got by somebody. And it's, it's the worst thing that could ever happen. And how big is that problem for real? How many seconds and am I going to be late, if at all? So trying to make sure that it's out of your minds and more tangible. So either putting it on paper or anything or a big problem or a big complex situation that you have to solve. I'll give you the example of when I was living in Germany. And by the time I was married and my husband there, he was absolutely not happy with work. To be honest, he was so unhappy. He was almost getting into depression and decided, no, 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 I don't want to live here anymore. This is awful. What are we going to do? And we spent months spinning around onto this situation until one night that we sat down and we said, what's the worst? And we asked, what's the worst? So what? So what? So what? Until we got to the bottom of it. So what if we both ask, um, resign from here and we want to go back to Brazil? So what? What if it takes us six months or one year to find new jobs there? What if we don't get a job after this? So until you go deep, deep, deep into what you really think it's a problem in your head and you put it on paper, you're going to see there's always a solution. So really unpacking. And then the next stage, if you click the next one, Ginger, please, is understanding if it's actionable or not. And I'm a super fan of the Harry Potter. So that's why the thinker is there to represent the way I, I like to think about this. Okay, if I understand what are the issues, can I act upon them? Are there things that I can really address and make effective? Or are there things that I just have to let go? Remember the feel in control is one of the key themes here for us to be under stressful situations. If I can't control and there's nothing that I can do, let me put it on the thinker. I know it's going to happen, but it doesn't need to be using my energy or my time. And then the things that are actionable, make a plan towards them. And then it's going to soothe, at least for me, it really soothes me into okay, now that we want to do this, when is the right time? And the last one, it's really understanding who you are and what are your energy givers and your energy takers. If I don't go for my run, if I don't go for my walk, my mind's not going to be in the right headspace. I'm not going to be able to contribute to solutions or to be a person that's going to work within the environment to help that problem go away. So still keep doing what's important for you. It's not because it's in crisis that you should stop doing the things that are important to you. That's when you should do them even more. That's really very important. And understanding what are your triggers, because it can't be that you don't have your escape. You need to have your escape in order to find balance again. So this, for me, is a way to get out of these stressful situations. And just before going into questions, and I see there are some in the chat, but I would love to hear from you live as well. I'd like to leave you with a quote from our very own Philly, um, Rocky Balboa. So if you click to the next one, Ginger, please. So this is uh, from Rocky in the film where he's talking to his son and he's telling his son how to be successful in a fight. And what I love is this bolded part here that it's telling that it's not about hitting hard because we can all hit hard. And for us as women, we're always gonna be in a disadvantage with somebody, if, if, especially if it's a man, if we just wanna win by hitting. It's really about how hard you can get hit by the stressful situations that we're going through in life or some unpleasant things that came our way, but we keep moving forward. That resilience of understanding that it's okay. I'm strong enough. This is not going to make who I am. So it's just one situation. It's not me. It's not who I am. And start all over. Just get up and start all over. So that for me is a very important motivational quote. I always like to remember that. 
thank you for your time. And I would love to hear your questions. Well, thank you so much. And Jess, just as a reminder, if someone would like to ask a live question to Tatiana, please raise your hand as you'll see the raise your hand on the bottom of your screen and I can unmute you. So let me start with some of the, the questions that came in early in the presentation. And Aaron says, I can be so stressed during the day because there is zero clarity. Am I switching teams? Do I have to start driving back to Malvern to work? Any advice on putting the stress behind you and just doing your job? So I would say the thinker is the best way, Erin, for you. If you really go through the problem, asking yourself, is this really a problem? So let's, let's start by the clarity part. There is no clarity. Can you ask? How much <laughs> clarity can you get? And if there is no Agree with what good looks like with somebody. Who's your boss? Who are you reporting to? Who's going to manage the expectation? So understanding and sharing that, having that connection of this is ours. It's not only yours. If you build it only in your head, it's going to be harder. But if you connect and share with somebody, it's going to be a connectivity. And then if you can focus on what you can do, but you know what are the things that you cannot do and just spark them, maybe that's help, that, that's helpful for you. Well, thank you for that. Well, our next question is kind of a different twist. And Hannah's question says, I did crack under pressure. How can I recover so that my teammates trust me again? Hannah, what I would say for you, when I cracked under pressure on that first um, instance that I shared with you early, early on in my career, I had to have the humility and the vulnerability of knowing I cracked. I didn't do the right thing. How can I make amends? So the way I reacted prevented things that I wanted to happen to me to happen. When I made amends, when I talked about it openly with people that I trusted, it all came back. And it's in the past. It's not who I am today. It's something that helped me learn a lot. And if you think about it as a learning experience versus an MBA to go through a situation like that, because you're going to know when it's coming next and you can prepare for that. So I would say talk honestly. That's wonderful advice. Thank you. So I think we have time for one more question before we move on to our panel discussion this afternoon. So this is another fun one from Ivy. Ivy says, how can I teach coworkers to learn to thrive under pressure? I thrive off the chaos, but others can't deal with this and shut down. Ivy, each person is unique. So I would say, help them see through life. Sometimes it's so difficult, so difficult that they can't see anything ahead of them. They're just shut down. So we have to think not through our lenses, which is interesting as well. And that's something basic on leadership that we can explore here too, on meeting the person where they are. We cannot come from our standpoint on, oh, it's super easy to deal with pressure for somebody that absolutely cannot. But if you go step by step with them, letting them go a little bit further every time, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll learn and they'll be able to go further. Hey, my friend, if you enjoyed listening to this podcast, be sure to rate, review and share your biggest takeaway. And if you're wanting more, you can access hundreds of recent speakers, book summaries, great articles, and more at no additional charge through your membership portal. You can also get involved in a Women Leaders Association Mastermind group or networking group near you. Or if you just need to access your membership portal, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com to be connected. Because here at Women Leaders Association, we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. That's all for today, my friends. Bye for now.